you I'm a special this thing is huge it doesn't fit anywhere there we go it's done it's finally done and my Mangi Zenin cosplay is well on its way. So today I'm going to talk you through all of the steps that I went through to make this amazing Naginata. Naginata? 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 I'm still not sure how it's pronounced, but it's this thing and it's actually pretty awesome. Let's dive into how I made this thing. I started by cutting two layers of cardboard from my Amazon boxes for the blade. Then I placed a dowel rod that I've had hanging around into the center of that cardboard to create structure because I've learned the hard way through my attack on Titan blade that structure that goes from the blade into the handle is extremely, extremely important if you don't want your blade to be a little floppy. I used hot glue to put all of the cardboard and dowel rod together and then placed my hot glued cardboard blade onto the layer of cosplay foam, hot glued it on there, and used that as a template to cut out my shape. Once all of the hot glue was dried, I applied rubber cement to the edges of the blade and I let it sit for a couple of minutes to get tacky. That way, once I stuck it together, it stayed in place. Now I had the base shape of my blade, so it was time to go on to forming the blade into something that looked a little more, a little harder, a little more realistic. This is where my Dremel came in handy. It can take cosplay foam and sand it down to being paper thin in places, which was really handy for when I wanted to make a sharp looking edge on the side of my blade. Now, I do tend to go a little overboard with the Dremel sometimes because honestly, Dremeling cosplay foam can be really, really relaxing. So try not to go overboard. But I did try out a couple of different textures and I had a lot of fun Dremeling out the shape of the blade. And then I, I Dremeled out the shape of the little divot in the blade as well. All right, so I have my basic shape. It is nice and smooth at the moment. And then I am covered in foam dust, which is wonderful and why I always do this outside. And then I am covered in foam dust, which is wonderful and why I always do this outside. Now that we have this nice and filed down and soft, we can go in and do a little bit of detail work and I can start thinking about making the handle to attach this guy to its handle and make it into the weapon I need it to be. Next, I prepped the pole for our Naginata. I used another leftover dowel rod that had been hanging around. It was a wide enough pole to look proportionally correct to the size of my blade. I used a drill bit the same size as the dowel rod inside of the blade five, and very six. carefully and held the larger dowel rod in place while I drilled a hole out of that dowel rod, which can be a little tricky to do if you don't have a partner, but just take your time and go slow and make sure you pull your drill out every now and then so that all of the sawdust that's in there and compacted comes back out of the hole so you can continue drilling. Just take your time and you'll be able to do it. This is a big moment placing one dowel rod into another dowel rod and hoping that it doesn't split open. So let's see if it works. All right, we have our rod and we have our blade and we have a hole. Let's, let's put a stick in a hole. That's gonna be super satisfying. Hopefully. I don't know if it's gonna fit. It's fitting. It's fitting! Oh my god, it's so cool! Oh my god, okay, time to, time to add all of the little details in the paint and stuff. It worked. It worked. And I sealed it in place with wood glue. Once the wood glue had dried, I was able to start constructing more detailed pieces from the cosplay foam, which I did by just looking at the picture and building up layers of cosplay foam and contact cement and then dremeling it down again, just like sculpting clay. It's a 3D construction. Now you can add more and you can always take more off. I also have this strange paper mache modeling clay 
that I tried to make out of old Amazon packing paper. Uh, I really didn't expect it to work, but it worked out really well for creating more details on this blade. And because of the little fibers of the paper, it holds it together and has just a little bit of flex to it. So it's pretty durable and has not fallen off of the cosplay blade with all of this that I've been And now is when it starts to really come to life. I started adding layers and layers of paint. I started out with a leftover can of silver spray paint that I had laying around to act as the base coat. Once that had dried, I went over it with this thicker silver paint and then went over specific parts of the blade with a darker paint and a wet paper towel in order to add dimension and texture to the blade and make it look a little more beat up. I also used a wet paper towel and leftover paint from my fireplace in Sherwin-Williams Bohemian Black. It is my favorite color and I always have a container of it around. So I used a wet paper towel and just wiped that onto the pole in order to create a more distressed look that meant that I didn't have to go back to the store and buy a can of spray paint just to paint a cosplay pole. I, I went over the more decorative and intricate pieces with gold paint and then also did the same dimension work with antiqued bronze paint on top of that and a wet paper towel. Wet paper towels really come in handy when you need to paint things with weird textures. Also, I love a good upcycling moment. I'm always up for a good upcycling moment. If I can upcycle your Amazon box into something really cool, I'm going to do it. For the finishing touches, I created the three rings at the base of the pole out of black heavy gauge jewelry wire, which I wrapped around itself once so that it had a little bit more structure and wouldn't just bend. I created three of those and used a drill to put them through the base of the pole. Then I used an old curtain that I had hanging around in my fabric storage that was the perfect color to create the banner for the end of this blade. I just tied that on. And then I use the same gauge of thick gold jewelry wire at the top of the pole next to the blade. I wrapped that around a couple of times and created a little bitty loop so that I could attach this little white fox tail keychain thing that I had laying around, which was just perfect to add a tail to the blade of my Nagidata. Fun fact. The tail is really important. It's really important to the function of the blade, and I'm going to be explaining that and when I go deeper into what I learned about this weapon and what I learned about the character through the process of making this cosplay, and that'll be on my Patreon. If you're interested in seeing Maki's and in fanfic cinema, make sure that you check out my website, freyafay.com, so that you can see more of the imagining that I've done with this, this amazing character and the characters that I'm shipping her with, which right now is Toto. I have already filmed Maki x Toto. It's amazing. You're going to love it. I can't wait to show it to you. So I'm excited to see you either over on my Patreon or on my website. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you can keep up with all of my chaotic creativity. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.